Today we're gonna to be making some easy no-cook recipes that are packed with flavor and nutrients. I'm gonna start with the Hailey Bieber smoothie from Air One, but a completely vegan version that involves no superfoods. Like same exact nutrition profile, but you can get everything you need from simple ingredients that you probably already have in your fridge. Then we're gonna be making my Subway sandwich order at home, including a really easy no-whisk dressing that you can use for all of your favorite subs, sandwiches, grinders, and my childhood favorite cereal bars, but a completely vegan version. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you ritual for teaming up with me and let's get started. The first recipe we're gonna make is a vegan version of the Hailey Bieber smoothie at Air One. This is super popular when I was at Air One recently for the vlog that I just posted. Literally everyone before me and after me was ordering this Hailey Bieber smoothie. It is definitely a big thing right now. It's all over my TikTok feed, but this is a really easy smoothie to make, so let's go ahead and get started. The first ingredient in Hailey Bieber skin smoothie at Air One is one cup of frozen strawberries and some almond milk. You wanna use unsweetened almond milk, and this one is very creamy. The next ingredient in Hailey's smoothie is vanilla collagen powder. Collagen is made from ground animal bones or some people will turn it into a bone broth by basically boiling the bones in water and ingesting it that way. And the reason that people consume collagen is because it's rich in amino acids like glycine and proline. And there are plant-based versions of collagen powder. So you can definitely go ahead and just use a plant-based supplement if that's what you wanna do. But me personally, I kind of shy away from that because there's not a lot of good research that shows that consuming collagen powder means that you're going to produce more collagen. Collagen. Obviously protein, which is made up of amino acids, is important for the body and all kinds of different functions in the body, but when you eat protein or when you eat collagen powder or anything that has amino acids, your body breaks it down and uses it the way that it needs to. It's not like eating collagen means that you miraculously make more collagen. That's not exactly how it works. So I kind of stay away from gimmicky stuff like that. I like to just use simple whole food ingredients. It's much more budget friendly and I mean, I'm not an expert so you guys can do your own research and choose what you want to use, but for me, I like to use pumpkin seeds, good old fashioned pumpkin seeds. They are rich in so many different vitamins and minerals, but they also have protein. And so this is a really good alternative for using collagen powder in your smoothies. The collagen that she uses is vanilla. So I just use some vanilla extract to get that flavor. The next ingredient in her smoothie is a powder or liquid form of hyaluronic acid. And you're probably familiar with hyaluronic acid. It's a popular skincare ingredient that's generally applied topically. I use it in a serum on my skin. It basically just helps your skin hold on to moisture. Here in California, it's very dry, so I love using it on my skin. But there are foods that can help your body to basically produce hyaluronic acid so you don't have to go out again and buy an expensive supplement. Those foods are kale, tofu, almonds, edamame, and sweet potatoes to name a few. I'm gonna be using some soft tofu here. This is not only going to replace the hyaluronic acid, but it's also, you may remember, a good source of amino acids and protein. So this is going to kind of do double duty in the smoothie, plus it's gonna make it super creamy. And don't worry, this is not gonna taste like tofu. I also wanted to show you the dates that I'm using. I really like Julie's as well, but I find that these are really consistently kind of soft and squishy and super caramelly. I get them, I've seen them at a few different places, but generally at Whole Foods in the produce section. And they're just always soft, always squishy, very flavorful and caramelly. I love, love, love these. So that's the brand that I kind of reach for very often. And so I thought I would share it. My best smoothie trick is always to let it blend for a little bit longer than you think it needs to. I do about 30 to 40 seconds because it's really tempting just to like pull it off once everything is liquefied, but you really want it to whip up and emulsify so it gets nice and creamy. Then the way they decorate the glass at Air One is they swirl in some coconut cream and some strawberry puree, which is really easy to make. I'll put the recipe in the description box below, but that kind of creates this ombre effect and you get this really beautiful beautiful kind of strawberry creamsicle effect in your smoothie. The great thing about this smoothie is that it contains fiber rich carbs, healthy fats and protein. So you're basically getting this combination that I always try to create on my plate because it, it's what makes me feel good for a long period of time. It helps to keep me full. It helps kind of stabilize my blood sugar and I'm not hungry like 20 seconds after having a smoothie if there's a good amount of fiber rich carbs, protein and fat. That combo is just really, really important for me to feel my best. And so I love that all of that just gets thrown into a blender and you have a very well-balanced smoothie in just a matter of minutes. Another thing that I do for my health in general is to consistently take a multivitamin. And I think consistency is the key there. So I've started taking it every single morning after breakfast. The one that I take is a vegan multivitamin from Ritual and I like it because it's minty. And so right after breakfast, I have my coffee, I have my breakfast, brush my teeth, take my multivitamin. It has that little pop of mintiness, which is really nice. But I also like 
like that it only contains nine essential nutrients. It doesn't have a bunch of stuff you don't need and everything that is inside of the vitamin is fully traceable. You can read everything from the nutrients and how they're sourced on the website. There's full transparency. Like it is all there for you to read, including evidence-based studies. This is an obsessively researched multivitamin, which helps to give me a lot of peace of mind as well. It's vegan friendly, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen friendly, and it contains no added sugar. We also have a men's multivitamin, a 50 plus, a prenatal, a postnatal, a kids and teens vitamin, and they recently launched their essential protein line. So if you guys want to get a really high quality vegan multivitamin and start adding that to your daily routine, then click the link in the description box below that will get you 20% off your first month. So definitely take advantage of that discount and let's go ahead and move on to the next recipe. We're going to start by making this no whisk salad dressing that you can use obviously for salads, but it's also really good on subs, sandwiches, grinders. It really gives that deli style sandwich effect. So we're gonna start with extra virgin olive oil, champagne vinegar, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. I add a touch of maple syrup just for balance and then some dried Italian seasoning. Just season that with salt and pepper and that's all you need. You can shake it on up. This makes about two servings, two to three. And I'm gonna use this not only for the greens, but also for the sandwich itself. Look at that, it smells amazing too. Then I'm gonna prep my veggies. I like to do really thin slices of cucumbers. When I'm slicing onions and I want them to be nice and thin, I don't pick up the knife. I kind of just rock the blade back and forth. But as you can see, it's kind of anchored on my cutting board the whole time. And that helps me to create these really thin pieces. It's also a good idea to chop your lettuce and your tomatoes really thin. Thin slices and thinly shredded lettuce is really the thing that kind of makes the difference in the texture. It just makes it that much better. So that's one of my favorite tips. Then I'm gonna season the tomatoes with salt and pepper. Don't do this if you're going to be packing your sandwich because you don't want them to release too much moisture. But if you're just making it in the moment, go ahead and season them up. I got a one of those like take and bake kind of rolls. It's like halfway baked from Trader Joe's. And these are so good because even when you toast them, they stay soft. So they're like crispy on the outside, but they're still nice and soft and fluffy. So I'm just gonna toast this up in the air fryer. And as you can see, it's like golden brown and warm, but it still has some give and some chewiness, which is so nice. Then when I go to Subway, I do one side avocado, one side Dijon mustard, and I always add both banana peppers, which are nice and mild, and some olives. And I feel like the brininess and the tanginess and the saltiness really goes a long way for a veggie sandwich so much flavor. I do the tomatoes, cucumbers, and onions, and then I usually do a mix of both spinach and the shredded iceberg. The shredded iceberg just has such a nice, cool, crunchy texture that is so good in the sandwich, especially with the warm bread. I'm gonna top that off, serve it with some chips and a glass of iced tea, and look at that, it's a work of art. This sandwich is very good on its own, but there's something about the combination of having the creaminess of the sandwich with the crunchiness, like that textural contrast of having this with potato chips, instantly takes it up like three more levels and then to wash it all down with like a cold crisp iced tea that trifecta sandwich chips iced tea it's summertime even if I'm having this on like a Wednesday and it's a work day and I'm like having lunch at my desk even still I feel the summer vibes like it is just such a nice meal that is super flavorful it's simple it's classic but it's good like really really good and satisfying so i hope you guys love it you guys are gonna think i lost my mind when you see the ingredients that i'm gonna put together here like it's definitely a strange combo and it's not strange ingredients like it's stuff you probably already have in your kitchen right now but it's stuff you don't normally see put together but i promise i did a lot of recipe testing here people because vegan honey is a thing you can buy it it's made from apples usually but I'm, i've never bought it and I don't like to call for specialty ingredients in my recipes. I like to use the most simple everyday ingredients possible so that everybody has access to them and everybody can make my recipes no matter where they are in the world. Like I don't like to use like one product that you can only get if you live in one place, you know? So I wanted to create a vegan honey nut cereal bar, just like the ones I loved when I was a kid. But when I was just swapping it out for maple syrup, it just didn't taste right. Like the there's something about honey nut, like if you remember honey nut Cheerio flavor, that honey nut flavor is like kind of bright and almost salty and there's the sweetness to it of course, but there's more going on. It's actually like a very dynamic flavor profile and so just adding maple syrup wasn't cutting it. So I figured it out. When I was a kid, these were kind of known as like the natural version of Rice Krispies treats. So instead of butter, we used peanut butter and instead of marshmallows, we used honey. Here obviously, I'm gonna use maple syrup instead of honey, but I have a couple tricks for making it taste more like honey. 
All right, so far super normal. We've got peanut butter, we've got maple syrup, but now we're gonna add some lemon. Lemon and peanut butter is not a combination that you might see very often with sweet things, but I actually found that adding the lemon helps to give it that brightness that Honey Nut Cheerios has. It's not a lot of lemon, so it's not gonna taste like lemon, but I do find that adding a little bit of this is one of the things that helps to like elevate that sweetness. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my lemon juice and a little bit of vanilla extract. Vanilla extract isn't in the recipe that I remember from being a kid. Like when I was a kid, we would make these cereal bars with Honey Nut Cheerios, Jif peanut butter, and honey. We'd mix it all together and then we put it in the fridge and we would usually like not even wait to cut it into bars. We'd just like eat it out of the container because it was so good and it was something that we could easily make as kids like anytime. But adding these ingredients really works with the peanut butter and the maple and that sea salt to create something that weirdly tastes like honey. Like when I first mixed it all together and tried it, I was just like, how does this taste like honey? But it really does in a very fun and nostalgic honey nut Cheerios kind of way. So we're gonna mix all that together. Now one thing about these bars is you don't want to cut them too soon. You want to make sure that they have time to set in the freezer so that they're actually like easy to slice and they stay together because they have that really delicious honey nut mixture all over them. Like they need to set and get hard otherwise they'll just fall apart. They actually taste better and they're crunchier when they're cold. So just give it a little time then slice them into bars and enjoy. If you want some more no-cook summer recipes, I'll link a few in the description box below, so definitely check that out. Again, that's also where you'll find the link to try Ritual, so don't forget about that. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye!